Mrs. Keene, I am so delighted that you have come to visit me here at the White House today. Well, it's my pleasure. I, I, I just can hardly believe that I'm here and, and seeing you for real. It, tra traveling through time and space has been an adventure in itself, but to meet you here at the White House is something else. Well, I, I must say, I've, I've never heard about traveling through time before, but you, you certainly are not dressed the way other women I know no, are dressed. No, I, I come from the year 2015. 2015? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Wow, that's remarkable. It is, and I have this opportunity to take back with me your personal accounting of your time, which I hope you'll allow me to do. It would be my pleasure. Do you mind if I write anything down or take well, some notes? Do. Is that all right please with do. you? Please do, absolutely. I would really appreciate that, of course. And it, it's, it's unbelievable that I'm here, but an opportunity like this, we must start at the beginning. And well, go ahead. The beginning is, how did you meet Mr. Lincoln, and what was your courting like? Oh, I must tell you, courting was very different uh, than sometimes it was for my sisters. But I moved and stayed with my sister and her husband, Ninian, on Aristocracy Hill. That was the area that the common folk referred to for all the uh, people who had money. And they had a coterie there, and people would come to visit very often. There would be evening get-togethers and parties. And I met many dignified lawyers and representatives in government. And one evening, this tall man dressed in a swallowtail coat that was too short and pant legs that were halfway up his calves, socks that were mismatched, and a worn pair of shoes walked in. Well, everyone was aghast, but I was curious. So you saw something. I did. I did. Maybe it was that twinkle in his eye, uh, that backwoods way, uh, those expressions he had. But there was something about him that I found very charming. And I think what he, he was very interested in politics, of course. And I think what attracted him to me was the fact that I was fluent in his favorite subject. And that was? Well, politics, of course. Of course, of course. And I must tell you, Mrs. Keene, there were other things, many other things we had in common. The reality is I discovered, you see, I had always said that the man I married would l allow me to go to the theater as often as I wanted. And it turned out that Mr. Lincoln loved the theater. Well, how perfect. Shakespeare. In fact, we often, while we were courting, would, would uh, sit in the... Uh, area of, at my sister's where we had a little privacy and we would read Shakespeare to one another. Shakespeare? Any particular sonnets that he uh, recited to you? Well, my dear, you know, it, it, it has been a while since then, but the fact of the matter is that when we lived in Springfield and certainly here in the capital, we have go, gone to the theater often with each other. Ah. So, so that's a part of being in Mr. Lincoln's life. What are some other parts that you could tell me about as being the wife of a president? Well, of course, I was an advisor to the president for many years. I helped him often make dis political decisions. I often read books or papers that he was interested in and reported to him you know, so that a, he wouldn't have to read them himself. There's a very, very famous president's wife, Eleanor Roosevelt who had the president's ear. And it sounds like you also had the president's ear. There's no question about it. When he was offered the governorship for the uh, territories of Oregon, I advised him not to go there because it would arrest any, his ability to uh, go further in politics if he was way, way out west. When uh, there were those debates before the election and he didn't know if he should have them, I said to him, you must do this, and he ultimately agreed. There were many th ways that I advised him. Ultimately, what happened when we moved to the White House, my position changed, and I became more of an ambassador so that I would go places and represent the country for him. So while he traveled a great deal when we were uh, in the early years, when our children were small, during our time in the White House, I was the one who traveled, whether, whether it was to uh, New York 
or Chicago or different resorts or New Jersey or different places where I would meet dignitaries from other countries as well as uh, governors and senators from this country, I was the one who did the traveling and, and continued to, to do the traveling, and he stayed closer mm -hmm. to home to help govern. Well, it's interesting you say that because our current president, Barack Obama, and his wife have small children, and it's almost as though she could have taken a lead from you because she is an ambassador as well for our president. I'm glad to hear that. Yes, and she has two small children, and your uh, children adapted well to the White House? I think they have enjoyed uh, their time here in the White House. On one hand, it has been very trying also because the mortality rate for children is very high. We, Mr. Lincoln and I have had four children, in fact, four sons. And Mr. Obama and his wife, what, what have they, they had? They have two daughters. Two daughters. Mm -hmm. Well, in any case, one of our sons, Edward, died before I'm we so ever sorry. came. Yes. And uh, one of the, something very heartbreaking was our son Willie's death here in the Capitol. I do have two sons who are still alive, our son Robert, who uh, went to Harvard and uh, was uh, in the lady uh, part of the war, um, you know, uh, uh, an officer in the war, and then our son Tad, who is, is somewhat younger. And I, I can tell you, though, when Will Willie was alive and Tad, they would play all sorts of pranks, and fr <laughs> frankly, the president and I love pranks and always laugh and enjoy them just as much as the boys enjoy them with their friends. They uh, took friends to the, to the uh, rooftop of the White House and pretended they were shooting guns. They got all the servants together and switched costumes, we, squished, switched gobs with them and pretended they were directing different things in the White House. They have had plays in the White House where they charged people a nickel to come and they also sold refreshments. It has, being in the White House has been a wonderful experience, not only well trying for Mr. Lincoln and me, but for the children it has been an incredible opportunity. So you haven't had to shield them from too much. It's, it's been a pretty easy transition for them from the White House to the public. I think the reality is Mr. Lincoln and I are the kind of parents who are, well, very, very lenient. We don't, we're not into punishments. We, we like the children to learn from their experiences and we've been very open to them trying as all sorts of things and meeting all sorts of people. So I, it's been a remarkable experience. Well, I'd like to ask you some questions about the theater. You brought that up before, and that's intriguing to me. My dear, there's nothing like the theater to set your mind at ease. A melodrama's stock, parts are stock, but always sure to please. The heroine will make us cry, the villain we <laughs> will boo. But everyone has such great fun with all the ballyhoo. Well, you have a way of expressing yourself that's surprising and quite wonderful. I, Thank you. Uh, you have a lovely voice. Thank you so much. Uh, definitely, uh, you're a great ambassador for the arts as I well. I try my best, and the arts are very important. Yes, I can see that. We must not overlook the arts. They, they make a life that much more rewarding and fulfilling. Yes, the culture cannot be without the arts. And through time and, and uh, eternity, that's been quoted by many different uh, people. So I, I appreciate hearing that in the... Uh, in your time, the arts were as appreciated as they were. Um, I, I can't help but bring up this subject, and I think that you're going to be startled at this uh, revelation, but you know they're doing a musical about you no. on Broadway. It's called Mrs. President Lincoln. In New York? On Broadway, yes. A they, musical about uh, me? Yes, exactly. It's oh, about my, you. My dear, that is really something. And it's, um, it's a one-woman show. Uh, it's amazing. And who all is, is performing it? What, well, what's the, the um, actress's name? The actress's name is uh, Dr. Carol Dunnitz. 
and she's a uh, multi-versatile, multi-talented, um, very driven and exemplary woman. She's a fine woman to represent you. Well, I do wish I could see that show. Perhaps we can find some way for me to travel to 2015. Yes, hang on to my hand when I go here. back. That would be wonderful. Yes, we could do that. That would be so great. Mm -hmm.